We're diving into the world of terror and fright as we explore the spine-chilling depths of a horrific incident where a woman is stripped and left hung overnight. She faced severe and terrible punishments, without any valid reason. Were women treated horribly in the past? Is it based on a true incident? Why was the lady that we are going to discuss being treated so brutally? Well, it's already known that women have experienced horrifying, shocking, and inhumane abuse throughout history. Women have been subjected to unimaginable crimes that have been justified by cultural, religious, and societal conventions, such as forced sterilizations, genital mutilations, and executions by burning at the stake in confinement in mental institutions. But the story we are going to talk about is named The Girl Next Door, which is a fantastic film that is well-written, well-acted, and really disturbing due to the horrific brutality, much like the other popular films based on true occurrences and the realization that the terrible is an actual narrative that occurred to a real person, rather than merely a work of fiction emotionally breaks us. The true account of Sylvia Likens, who was murdered and subjected to torture in Indiana in 1965. Did you know that horror movies can increase your heart rate and blood pressure, triggering a fight-or-flight response? This can lead to the release of adrenaline, which can make you feel more alert and focused. Now, let us know what exactly happened in the movie. The story begins with a wealthy businessman named David receiving a call on his trap phone while strolling down Wall Street. An elderly man who is sleeping on the street is struck by a car as soon as he passes by. David attempts to assist him and, amazingly, saves the man's life by doing CPR on him. Then he brings up the 1950s, setting up a flashback to a time when he did something similar, specifically to two girls named Meg Lachlan and her sister Susan. When David was a young boy, he saw Meg behind him as he was catching fish. David then observes a scar on her arm as she raises her sleeves to catch some fish. She claims it was a significant accident when David inquires about it. Evidently, the accident she was referring to claimed the lives of both of her parents and left her sister partially crippled. At that point, it is clear that David developed feelings for her. David leaves his residence and visits Donnie, a buddy who is Meg's cousin, at his home. The two girls resided with Donnie, who was their brother, and their aunt Ruth then comes to his attention. Ruth, a person with a history of mental illness, was given charge of them. Ruth entertained them and provided them with cigarettes and beer. Ruth's children were present there while she starved Meg, lectured her about misogyny, and called her a whore. Ruth stripped Susan and slapped her for being a caniver after Meg slapped Ralphie when he touched her improperly. Officer Jennings, a local police officer, receives a report from Meg about the abuse, but Ruth is not charged criminally. Ruth and her boys tie Meg up in the basement, torture her, undress her, and hang her by the arms from the rafters overnight as punishment. She finally dehydrates to the point where Ruth can't even get her to eat the dry toast. Ruth spanks Susan's exposed bottom once more as retaliation for Meg. Ruth gives the neighborhood kids permission to tie, beat, burn, and cut Meg for amusement while they are at the Chandler home. Ruth uses cigarettes to cauterize Meg's wounds. David makes an attempt to tell his parents but is unsuccessful. Officer Jennings returns responding to another report of Meg being abused but Ruth and her sons persuade Officer Jennings that they were merely playing rough. David releases Meg's restraints and orders her to flee that night while they are preoccupied conversing with the police officer. He even makes the generous offer to leave cash in the woods for her. Meg comes back for Susan and comes really close to escaping but she is captured. David goes back to the Chandler residence and is shown to the basement, where Willie is raping Meg. Ruth refuses because she believes it would be incest for Donnie to skinny dip in his brother's scum and rape Meg. Donnie also wanted to rape Meg. In the end, Ralphie proposes cutting Meg so that she will be perceived as a whore. Ruth accepts as soon as she uses a heated bobby pin to etch a pornographic inscription into Meg's stomach and a blowtorch to burn her intimate areas. Following that, Ruth and her sons taunt Meg, boasting that nobody can save her because she will soon pass away from her wounds while escaping from their home. David tries to flee and call for assistance, but the boys tie him up and kick him in the groin before shifting their focus back to Meg. David awakens later that day while still lying on the cellar floor. After releasing his restraints, he discovers Susan seated next to unconscious Meg. Susan discloses to Meg that she had told her about Ruth assaulting her which made Meg apprehensive to flee by herself. David prepares their getaway and starts a fire in the cellar. David strikes Ruth to death with Susan's crutch as she goes into the basement to extinguish the fire. 
When Ruth's sons show up in the cellar, Willie tries to slit David's throat with a knife before Officer Jennings steps in and takes the Chandler boys into custody. Susan is taken by the police from the basement so that she can give a witness statement in court, leaving Meg with David. Meg receives the ring necklace back from David, and with her last remaining strength, she expresses her gratitude to him and her love for him before succumbing to her wounds and passing away as theorized by Ruth and her sons. Going back in 2007, David as an adult considers how his past continues to plague him. But as Meg had taught him, it's what you do last that counts. Before we move further here is a fun fact for you. Studies have shown that watching horror movies can also lead to the release of endorphins, which can produce a feeling of euphoria and reduce pain. While there has been much discussion of the movie, now let us dive deeper into the state of the real horror story that actually took place with Sylvia Likens. Sylvia Likens, the real-life Meg, passed away in a manner that was remarkably similar. The distinction is that there isn't a David to at least try to defend her in real life. In the film, Sylvia suffers abuse from a family friend, Gertrude Banaszewski, while Sylvia is subjected to unimaginable torture by her mentally unstable aunt. The parents of Sylvia had five kids and frequently worked at a fun fair. But after the mother was imprisoned for theft in the middle of 1965, the father, Lester Likens, divided the kids up among friends and family. As a result, Sylvia and one of her sisters, Jenny, wound up living with the unstable family friend Gertrude. All the things started out well, Paula, Gertrude's oldest daughter, frequently had disagreements with the two sisters. The lives of Lester's two children were irrevocably changed when his payment did not come through. Jenny would sit outside and watch as Gertrude would punish Sylvia by locking her in a room while Jenny listened to her sister sob in agony. After Lester managed to make the payment, the abuse continued to worsen. Gertrude accused Sylvia of being a prostitute and had her daughter and one of the neighbors tattoo, I am a prostitute and proud of it, on Sylvia's tummy. She also prevented anybody from coming to see Sylvia, including a nurse who was worried about Sylvia's health. Sylvia was made to compose a letter claiming that she had flowed with a group of lads to whom she had offered sexual favors when Gertrude somehow sensed Sylvia's demise was imminent. After that, the boys beat her to death. Jenny and Sylvia tried to flee, but they were too weak and starved to succeed. On December 26, Sylvia passed away from starvation and a brain hemorrhage. The untrustworthy family friend accused the unnamed lads of killing Sylvia, but the authorities eventually discovered the truth. The police had an opportunity to speak with Jenny while they were at Gertrude's house, and she told them the truth. Everyone implicated in the torture, including Gertrude, was detained. After serving 20 years in jail, Gertrude was released and passed away five years later. While this was a gruesome story of Sylvia, who was brutally punished to death for no reason. Do let us know your opinions on this terrific story. Have you ever experienced a horror incident? If yes, please do share your stories in the comment section below.